Good morning and thank you for joining us for an AFN Iwakuni and Power 1575 special event. Joining me today is the 36th Commandant of the Marine Corps, General Joseph Dunford, and the 18th Sergeant Major of the Marine Corps, Sergeant Major Ronald Green. Now, first, we invited members of the local Marine Corps Air Station Iwakuni community to send us some questions to ask both of you. And one of the most basic ones was, what brings you both to MCAS Iwakuni today? I'll just start, sir, and ask. I mean, the, the number one thing that, that Sergeant Major Green and I wanted to do was was come by and tell the Marines in Iwakuni how proud we are uh, of what they're doing and just to thank them uh, for what they're doing. Now, a hot-button topic amongst some Marines is the tattoo policy. A young Marine here on uh, Iwakuni would like to know if you have considered changing the policy. We did get that question, uh, Sergeant House, a few minutes ago as well in the theater. Uh, some Marines asked, and uh, there has not been uh, a process to review the policy right now. But, uh, but later this month, uh, Sergeant Major and some of the senior enlisted leaders are going to look at it, and I'll let Sergeant Major Green talk about that. Uh, we're going to take a look at it on the 31st of March and the 1st of April. The uh, most senior Sergeant Major in the Marine Corps, the force level, will come together. We heard you. Uh, you, are our, you are our eyes and ears. We're your voice. We're going to come together, take a look at the policy, take a look at, you know, as the Commandant says, what's best for the Marine Corps. I'll put it like this. We're the Marine Corps. America expects you know, great things out of Marines. We absolutely have to do the things that are right that make us combat effective and combat ready. Whatever that is, we're going to make that decision and give that advice to the Commandant based on his intent and how he leads the Marine Corps. And he talked about that in the uh, theater today. This question is from one of our family readiness officers on base. Uh, she'd like to know, how are you going to ensure that family readiness stays a priority with all of the current budget cuts? Some are concerned that with less money, family readiness programs shouldn't be a priority. Okay, we, we, first of all, we are going through some difficult fiscal times, and so we've got to tighten our belt in a couple of areas. But I will tell you this, uh, more than 50% of our Marines are married. Uh, we know that family readiness is critical uh, for us to be a combat-ready organization. It's inextricably linked to being combat ready, having a high level of family readiness. And so my, my, my goal is uh, we will maintain a high level of family readiness. We may have to trim the budget. We may have to do it a different way than we did it in the past, but we're still going to do it. And we're still going to make sure that our families are, are uh, kept in the information loop and that they're supported and that they have access to all the services that they, uh, that they require in order to be ready. And so we'll, we'll continue to do that. And I don't think we ought to have concerns that we won't be focused on family readiness. We certainly will. The next question is, with all of this talk about Marines potentially going back to Iraq, what would the potential role of Marines in Iraq be? Yeah, we, have, we actually have Marines on the ground uh, today in Iraq from both uh, 1MEF and 2MEF, and, and their role is to help develop the capabilities uh, of the Iraqi security forces. Uh, in the Marines' case, we're helping train the Iraqi 7th uh, Division, which is out, uh, out of um, uh, Al-Anbar in our on our province at Al-Assad Air Base, where many of our Marines have served in the past. And uh, my expectation is that we'll continue to do that training. The other thing we have is uh, we've got uh, typically a fixed wing squadron. It happens to be Harriers right now, rotating in and out of Bahrain. And that squadron is providing uh, uh, support for the strikes that are going to take place against ISIS in both Iraq and Syria. And then the other critical mission we're performing is for uh, security of the embassy uh, in Baghdad and for other uh, key facilities inside of, uh, inside of the region. The previous Commandant's policy was to refocus the Marines as a quick reaction force by slimming us down and repositioning us. Will that continue to be your priority? My priority is to, is to make sure that the Corps answers uh, what's expected of the Corps. The Sergeant Major spoke about the 82nd Congress in 1952, where they designated the United States Marine Corps as the nation's force of readiness, the force that's most ready when the nation is least ready. And we're going to be prepared to respond to crisis on a day-to-day -day basis. And we're also going to be prepared to respond to a larger contingency with our units that may not be forward deployed, but may be training back at home station. So what, what my focus is, is to make sure that we meet the expectations uh, of the American people. You know, when the, when the American people have a crisis, they, they expect us to respond to today's crisis today. And, uh, and that's exactly what we'll continue to do. Here's a question from a young Marine in Marine Wing Sports Squadron 171. In recent years, Marines have deployed from Iwakuni to be a part of operations in Royal Australian Air Force Base Tyndall 
and in the Marine detachments in Darwin, Australia. When can we expect to have Marines on a permanent base in Australia? We have a thousand Marines right now that rotate into Australia for six months at a time during a dry season. So they'll start their deployment in, uh, in late May or late April of uh, this year. And that's, a, that's, an annual, that's an annual event now for deployment during a dry season. That force started as a, uh, as a pure infantry force. It's now got aviation capability as well, and it will grow uh, eventually to a 2,500 uh, Marine force and a Marine Air Ground Task Force down there. So uh, we won't have a permanent base, but we will be on a base, uh, a shared base with Australian forces, and we will have a, uh, a consistent rotational presence in Australia. Our next question comes from a Marine spouse. As a Marine spouse, she would like to hear how both of your spouses help to support you in your careers. Uh, my wife has supported me and my kids all the way through my career. I mean, they, you know, you think about the spouse, whether male or female, our job, the comment I was just talking about, to be most ready when the nation is least ready. So that means we must be ready today, not tomorrow. So when I, when I talk to Marines, I talk about the three types of readiness, personal readiness, family readiness, and unit readiness. And all three of them must have that synergy. The comment I talked earlier about the stool with the three legs. The spouse is a one leg. That's the family readiness portion of it. And him saying that we're going to dedicate the monies, the resources to our, to our families. Uh, the spouses, we couldn't do it without them. We absolutely could not do it without them. And knowing that the Marine Corps 50% plus have spouses, they're married today. Unlike when the commandant and I came in, that, that number was much smaller. And the spouse, I mean, my wife, always dedicated, always there for me. Uh, know the challenges that we have. Uh, when I was selected, you know, to be the Sergeant Major Marine Corps, um, she was all in, all in, never a doubt. Uh, I talked to her, you know, about uh, before I knew I was coming, you know, to, to talk about, you know, being the Sergeant Major Marine Corps. She was the one actually, you know, in my corner saying, hey, you know what? You, you need to go forward. Uh, the Marine Corps is calling you to come up there, and if you're selected, we're going to put our best foot forward. She didn't say, I put my best foot forward. She said, I'll be behind you. We're going to be behind you 100%. So she's always been there for me, and she'll always be there. I'll always remember that and always be there for her. It's a team. This is the Marine Corps. Yeah, we, we, my wife and I have been married over 30 years, raised three children in the Marine Corps, and I'll just tell you, it's as simple as this. Every decision I've made uh, to stay in the Marine Corps after the time I've been married has been a decision that my wife supported. In other words, I could not have stayed a Marine I couldn't have spent the time and the dedication it takes to be a Marine leader uh, without the support of my wife uh, and her willingness to endure the sacrifices, the, the frequent moves and the separation and all those kinds of things. And so uh, when, you serve, uh, when you serve in the United States Marine Corps and you have a family, you have a spouse, uh, you know, the whole family serves uh, to a certain extent. And, uh, and so I would just say her willingness to do all that is what's allowed me to stay in the Marine Corps. Finally, the last question I have is the most basic. Is there anything you gentlemen would like to say to the Marine Corps Station Iwakuni, its Marines, its sailors, or its civilians? Uh, I'd just like to add how proud, you know, the Commandant and I are of all the Marines in Iwakuni. All the Marines across the Marine Corps. We're here in Iwakuni, and we're absolutely proud of everything you're doing for your Corps and for the country. Couldn't be more proud. And thanks. Yeah, I, I, I just echo the Sergeant Major's comments. I mean, that's, again, why did we come here? We, we came to say thanks. We are extraordinarily proud of the Marines here at Iwakuni. They're the anchor point, frankly, of our presence here in the Pacific. Uh, they send a loud and clear message to all of our allies in the region that the United States Marines are here. And, uh, and should something happen, they'll be in a position to respond. And I also sent, think they send a loud and clear message to any potential adversaries in the region as well that the United States Marines are here. So we get paid to be relevant. We are. We get paid to be ready. We are. And uh, we get paid to be professional. And uh, that's certainly what I've seen here this morning at Iwakuni is, is Marines who are professional, proud, and, uh, and frankly make the Sergeant Major and I proud. So thanks, Sergeant House. And the Commandant and I, we thank all the spouses out there and the dependents that serve along with us. You know, we enlist Marines, we re-enlist families. So thanks very much. Thank you for stopping by Marine Corps Air Station Iwakuni and AFN Iwakuni. Thank you for talking with us, and thank you to all the listeners for listening in.